Democratic presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders has spent a lot of time telling voters that he doesn't have a super PAC and is a people's candidate who doesn't want Wall Street's money. But as the WSJ's Laura Meckler reports, that's not necessarily the case, and she's here to discuss that. Hey, Laura. Hi there, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. So you've looked into this and you found that despite his characterization that he rejects super PACs, he's in fact benefiting from such spending. What's the story? Well, the story is that there is a big union, the um, nurses union, and they in fact do have a super PAC and they are working very hard on Bernie Sanders' behalf. So far they've spent about $1.5 million supporting his campaign. They have a big bus that they had all around Iowa with a big picture of Bernie Sanders on the side. So now he doesn't have any control over this. I mean, there's no, you know, super PACs are by law separate from campaigns. You're not allowed to coordinate and, you know, they don't need his permission. You know, that said though, he says in almost every single speech, I don't have a super PAC. I don't want a super PAC. But, you know, arguably he does. Uh, how does that compare to Hillary Clinton? Well, Hillary Clinton definitely has a super PAC. Hers is called Priorities USA, and it was run by a former aide of hers, and she has on occasion helped them raise money. So there are, the ties are closer there. Um, she also can't coordinate what they do. And there are also a couple smaller um, super PACs that are also working on her behalf. So, but, um, so she definitely is, is deeper into it, but she, of course, doesn't, doesn't um, say anything to the contrary. But what's fascinating is the influence of campaign donations seems to be like almost a, a central theme in this Democratic battle. Why are these two candidates fighting over who's more progressive? Well, it's interesting. I mean, the, so yes, I mean, a big part of the core appeal of Bernie Sanders is that he is not bought and paid for, that he is, you know, speaking the truth and that he's not just being influenced by millionaires and billionaires on Wall Street. And that's a huge part of what makes him, I think, attractive to a lot of voters. Um, that also leads into there's a larger battle over who's more progressive on a range of issues from health care to college affordability to Social Security. They're having fights on all of these different points. But underlying the whole thing is sort of, you know, are, they, are you looking out for the interests of the people or are you looking out for the interests of your campaign donors? Okay, Laura, so you talked to the Sanders campaign. How have they responded to this? Well, you know, they respond that they have no control over this super PAC and that, you know, that they, of course, they point out that it's not funded by millionaires and billionaires, it's funded by nurses. So, but, you know, that's not really the only issue with Sanders. It's, it goes beyond just this one thing. Another thing that the Clinton campaign has actually drawn attention to is the fact that he benefited when he was running for the Senate from the um, contributions money raised by the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, which is... Um, gets a lot of money from Wall Street, and its whole purpose is to elect Democrats to the Senate, and they helped him in his campaign. So there are a lot of different ties there between um, him and indirectly the you know the Democratic establishment, which has long been supported by Wall Street money. Okay, so he's taken the money, but if he's taken the least money from Wall Street and super PACs of all the candidates, can this really hurt him? Isn't he still the candidate with the fewest ties to Wall Street? Definitely. I absolutely think that's true. And I don't know that this hurts him at all, frankly. I think that his supporters won't be particularly troubled by this. And I think that um, he absolutely can go out there and say he has the fewest ties. He does get, he has, um, his campaign has taken in about $50,000 directly from people tied to Wall Street. That's not very much compared to what other candidates get, such as Hillary Clinton. But I don't think that would necessarily bother, um, bother people who support him. He still has a very, very clear anti-Wall Street message. Um, anti-big money message um, that is at the heart of his campaign. As always, really good stuff. Laura Meckler, thank you very much. Thank you.